Welcome to Cap Academy. Today we're going to go over the scanning workflow. So I'm going to start a new case by hitting the blank page icon in Dental Manager. Once our order form is open, I'll fill out some of my patient info by entering in the doctor I'm working with and then the patient uh, name. It's not required, but I'll usually include the shade to help sort through cases. After that, we can choose our tooth number, just left click so that it's highlighted, and then select the type of restoration on the right hand side. For this case, I'm going to do a full contour crown. If you need to change the material, you'll just hover your mouse over the plus sign and adjust the material to whichever you need. After that, you just want to double check the scan settings that are in the top right corner. It automatically fills these in based on the indication you choose, and in this case it's already accurate to what I have to scan. After that, I can either hit OK if I plan on entering in a bunch of order forms all at once, or I can hit the scan button to immediately go into the scanning for this case. Now that the scanning program is open, I can see at the top middle it shows our main workflow, and the highlighted step for the upper arch is where we're currently at. On the left hand side it'll give us details on that, uh, that part of the workflow. Right now it wants me to put in the prep arch. The first scan it does is going to be a low resolution, fairly quick scan. Now that the preview scan is completed, we're going to set an annotation on 2-3 on the buccal margin. It doesn't have to be placed exactly, as long as it's somewhere close to that margin. You can just left click, and then you'll be able to highlight the rest of the model green. Anything highlighted green is going to be captured in more detail, whereas the areas left yellow will be left out entirely from the scan data. After you've highlighted the area that you're interested in, you can hit next to continue scanning. Now that the scan is complete, we're going to take a look around. We can see some areas have been highlighted red, which means that the software thinks that that area hasn't been captured in a high level of detail. If that red spot is in an important area, we would want to fix that. I do see some red on the margins for this case, but that won't be an issue because we're going to be scanning the die on its own later on in this workflow. I would be concerned if there was red on the contacts at this point, however. So if I did want to try and get rid of some of those uh, red inaccurate areas, I'm going to use the adaptive scanning button. You'll then make sure your circle size is fairly small so that you can highlight just a small area. It does a better job fixing uh, these areas if you're only highlighting the, the small region that is needed. After it finishes its additional scan, it should have cleaned up that area a little bit, and it does look a little bit better than it did previously. But after that, I'll continue to the lower arch step. So I'll continue next. Now that the upper jaw is finished, we'll continue to the lower jaw. We'll put the model in, and it's going to take a preview scan just like before. 
Now that the preview scan's finished, it's automatically highlighted the area it thinks needs to be captured in more detail. It should automatically highlight this based on where I highlighted for the previous scan. So unless I need to add anything extra, I'll just continue and hit next so that it takes the detail scan for the lower jaw. Now that the lower jaw is finished, I'll take a look and double check if there are any red areas. I'm not concerned unless the red area is on the occlusion in this case. After that, I'll continue to the bite scan. At this step, I want to put the models in the scanner in occlusion. People can use different methods of holding the models in occlusion. Most of the time, I'll just use some rubber bands to hold that together. Um, but I've seen people use hot glue or sticky wax as well. As long as the models aren't moving in the middle of the scanning, it should be okay. It won't matter which arch happens to be on top at the time, and it also doesn't matter if the working area is covered by a rubber band or wax. For this scan, it's just going to take a really quick buckle side scan. And once that's finished, we're going to go to the alignment results stage to see if the software was able to line it up automatically. In this case, it was able to line it up automatically. I know that it's lined up correctly because I see a speckled spotted texture across all of the surfaces. And if it had, uh, had a problem, it would have popped up with a warning that says automatic alignment failed. I don't have to in this case, but if, uh, if there was a problem, I would go to the Align Lower Arch Manually step and just use one or three points to line up. These points don't have to be in the exact same position. As long as they're roughly in the same area, it should be okay. No matter where you mark your points, the software is going to do a little bit of aligning on its own as well. So again, as long as you see the speckled spotted texture, the alignment should be okay, and I'll continue to the upper jaw. Now that both arches are lined up, I can continue next, and we'll take in the die scan. For the die scan, it doesn't matter what direction it's facing, as long as it's centered in the middle of the plate. Once that's in place, we'll finish up our scan, and just double check the results. As long as the die looks clear and there's no red areas, we'll continue forward and look at the final results of our scan and you can kind of see how it's replaced the original die scan with the new detailed die area. After that, I could hit the design button to move forward for the design of this case, or if I have more cases that I need to scan in, you can hit either of the X icons to save and close.